Extract from Lucy. Just before the friend from abroad was about to pull off from their spot on the shoulder of the highway, the back door of the front passenger seat of the car opened and a woman got in. A few seconds after, the front passenger seat opened and a man got in. They did so very nonchalantly, as if it happened to be the most natural and expected thing in the world to do. At first, Lucy was too shocked to say anything, but eventually she realized that the people were not aware that they were not supposed to be there and were not welcome. This is not a taxi, you know, she pointed out. Yes, it is, the woman said, staring at her as though she was slightly crazy. This woman was rather curious looking, at least in her attire. She had on frumpy old clothes, perhaps a few different sizes of dresses piled up on her body, making her look at least four times the size that she would be if she had had on one outfit or no outfit at all. Lucy could tell from her thin face that she was a small woman, somewhat bird-like and troubled looking. No, this isn't a taxi, Lucy said again. She had to be firm, this time because the man and woman were looking as though they were settled comfortably and were not prepared to get out of her car. This is my car, my personal car. I bought it two years ago with my own money, which I toiled for and saved. This is not a taxi. But we're going home, which is south, the woman said. I don't care where you're going, Lucy retorted dryly. We are going home too, to the east. I don't believe you live in the east, the woman said. Then, as if it was any of her business anyway, she asked Lucy to see some form of identification, obviously so that she could be sure that Lucy was telling the truth. Thinking that proof of her identity might somehow make the woman and her male companion leave the car, Lucy showed her her driver's license, the photo in it was horrible, and it didn't look a thing like what she looked like now. She had had long hair in the photo and had since cut it short, lost weight, started eating vegetables, which made her skin glow and look like a celestial orb. In the driver's license photo, she looked sallow, dull, and uninteresting. Oh, yes, you are from the east, the woman said as she handed the driver's license back. Lucy was suddenly aware that there was a tiny bundle wrapped amongst the woman's layered clothing. The woman's arms were cradling the bundle, almost incidentally, as though the bundle was a part of her. Well, it had been once. Amazing! Lucy realized that the bundle in the woman's arms was a baby, and a very young one at that, probably just recently out of the womb, maybe a few days old, perhaps even a few hours old, or young, as the case may be. Angels are incidental, she thought she heard the woman say, only she did not see her lips move when she said it. All this time, the man in the front seat had said nothing, neither had the friend from abroad. It was as though time had stopped in its tracks to allow only Lucy and the woman to connect, communicate, commune. Well. If you like, you can come with us to the east, Lucy said, giving in slowly and smoothly. She wasn't quite sure why, but it felt like the right thing to do. In the east, it will be much easier for you to get a taxi to take you south. She tapped her friend from abroad. Drive, she said. Let's go east. As they drove along, Lucy glanced at the man in the front and realized that he, too, was holding a very young baby, perhaps the same age as the little one that the woman was holding twins? The face of the baby was peering over the man's shoulder. It had small, round black eyes peeping out of a face as small and ripe, as small as a ripe fruit. The woman, who was staring straight ahead, said nothing. At that moment, reached out her hand and held Lucy's, which had been resting on the seat between them. Something in her grip felt earnest, yet quiet, as though to say, don't let anyone know. Know what? Lucy wondered, but she said nothing. She just sat there, feeling the woman tighten and loosen her grip, almost like the sucking sound of a babe at the breast of a comforter. 
even though Lucy didn't understand why the woman was holding her hand like such a trusting innocent, she felt privileged. It was their little secret. No one had ever trusted her like that, certainly not a complete stranger. Brenda, 